All right, folks, let's get started. We're going to be busy doing a couple of tutorials around this whole theme of uh, adding some 3D. Right, and so here's a, an example where we had a 3D rendered uh, landscape created in uh, PD Howler. And we then added this 3D object right around here. Uh, and this one came from a download of a 3D OBJ file from uh, NASA's website. So it's some sort of a launch pad, and I call this left behind, as in the rocket has, has left, and we are looking at this and say, where am I going to go now, right? But uh, one thing that's important, too, is we have a little bit of a reflection down here that we want to add. And of course, that's fake, but it's uh, something that we, we're going to see how to create some of these. But before we do any of that, we're going to go back to the basics, which is where did we start with the 3D? It was under the view menu in the version maybe you have. It, it may still be there, but we are soon going to release a newer version. So under the view menu, you'll see down to utilities and widgets. And there's below the preview DWA, there's another category here, another program. Uh, an option there for rendering an OBJ that has or that is moving over here now under the render and render geometry right it's a little bit more generic uh, it's currently focused on OBJ it might in the future maybe include other formats but OBJ right now and in your installation folder uh, Howler which is probably on the C drive under program files x86 Howler geometry there's a geometry subfolder and there will be some fol foliage and chest I've added something here called terrain you won't have that initially but you can uh, you can create extra subdirectories or you can have them completely in a different place but what we'll do here is we'll double click this and expand what's in that foliage subdirectory right? so here you have some trees these are obj files three-dimensional trees uh, there is a tree trunk there's some branches and twigs and leaves uh, for example the oak tree that's one of the bigger ones uh, <clears throat> takes a few seconds to load and there it is. So now it renders on top of the scene, whatever image you have in the background. And in fact, if you want to create a, an asset with this, uh, it doesn't matter what background you have. You can certainly just click the Make Brush button there and click that. And now you have it as a brush. So if you go to Enable the Brush uh, Preview, you can see it here. It's a little bit smaller because the size by default was smaller, but you can have it back to the original size. And then you can paint with it and you can do all sorts of stuff that you may already know with regards to how to use Howler or other versions of Dog Waffle. Here is another rendering we did. And, you know, you might want to use that to populate it with some extra trees. Let's go to a stamp down mode. Stamp me down. There you go. And maybe X for horizontal um, flip so you can have a slightly different appearance. Uh, maybe make it a bigger uh, get to the brush and make it a bigger, uh, what's that, a resample. Uh, let's say double size times two. <clears throat> and so that's the idea, right? Is you, you started from a 3D object, uh, the OBJ file, but you can then take it in uh, with with other, uh, <clears throat> other tricks in mind. So here you can, for example, load it like that. Um, let's say you want, on top of that, you want to disable the brush here and go and add a, a lens flare. There's, of course, a lot of other features in the program here. And you could say, for example, you want the reddish tint here on the lens flare. And there you go. All right, so let's go do that on one or two others. Uh, actually, from scratch, right? If we haven't even created this landscape yet, you'll need to have some sort of an elevation map, something like this maybe er erode it so you can you can have the erosion calculated and then subtract it from the elevation map. Uh, there's two ways to do that. One here is the stylize option and then simply erosion calculates it, store that, go to the store menu and then go back to the prior image and subtract the stored erosion which is at the bottom here. And so you can subtract it, combine it in subtract mode. All right, that's a little bit too harsh, too much uh, erosion, and you may want to reduce it a little bit in its intensity with this uh, interactive undo, and bingo. So let's say we have this now. Let's go render that very quick. Uh, you could actually add some more. You could go to the 3D designer and say, let's also add a little bit of coloring based on, uh, I don't know, elevation, based on, you know, add some snow in the upper elevations. So create texture. 
and you see snow, rock, and greens. And as you adjust this, you see where that snow is going to show based on the elevation, where the, the green is going to grow, uh, and also where the rocks are going to prevail. And then you could add a few other things, like uh, get some snow in the valleys here. Um, you, you actually will probably need to bring it down a little bit lower. Uh, you can also add some erosion, uh, something like this here, on top of what was there already. So maybe you want to really heavily erode it. Uh, that's going to carve out a lot of uh, material. And you can even <laughs> reduce the, the flatness threshold here to just four or five. And then that will just be very erosion intensive. Uh, you can also adjust then where that material goes, so to speak, you know, <laughs> adjust the uh, leftover material sediment deposits, so to speak. And let's say if we want to do that creation of the texture once again, uh, now we have a little bit more of a wintry scene, some snow packs here or there. Let's go and perhaps give it a little bit of a pre-filtering, make it a little bit softer around it. And that's it. So store it. You can store the erosion. You can store the uh, the height map with the erosion applied. Uh, the texture, that's the coloring based on slope and elevation. And of course, you could also save it as an OBJ file, but we want to do that here. We'll do another demo on that. So let's say we want to just render that and go to render that even better. So what, because you know, we could use this as a starting render. It's really more the design part. And then if you if you want to, use the elevation map again like this and you have the color map here already or you load it again uh, you could then at that point take it over to the transform puppy ray gpu and that's going to be a little bit more impressive in terms of the the realism you can get with water uh, let's say we we do something like this here and uh, add some some smoothing here until it is the pre-filtering so we don't see too many of these staircases down here you see that that uh it looks like an amphitheater <laughs> with seating area uh let's uh increase the global illumination increase the pre-filter uh, a couple of other things we might do is perhaps lower the camera so go here and then right button in the preview to control the position of the camera and that may be perhaps something you want to be like this adjust the position of the terrain also that's another thing you can do uh, perhaps reduce the pre-filter a little bit so it's a bit more uh, sensitive to fine detail doesn't doesn't er erase it too much the level of the fog pushed it back a little bit it's going to tile it endlessly up to 10 times so you can see that terrain <clears throat> especially if it's seamless it's a really nice repetition and it goes to, down to the horizon. Here you can add a little bit of uh, wackiness, maybe bring the terrain down just a little bit. So we have some water here, but we want to click the more button here. So you have some more uh, options for scattering the water. Let's say 77 should be a pretty intense water level. Yeah, that's actually too intense. Let's go 33 and we see a little bit of that. We can also increase the attenuation <clears throat> and perhaps less of the scattering or make it maybe make the the scattering a different color either darker uh, or even a brownish color anyway this this will be just fine let's keep the free filtering so we don't see the uh the staircases down here and what else could we possibly want for this so we need to have some sort of a proximity parts parts that are up close nearby and then we have a tree right in front of us right so somewhere around here um we can perhaps change the the noise on the water add some ground fog let's pre-render that again uh that's looking good we may want to make the sun a little bit bigger let's say 123 just a little one out of the wrist there you go and then maybe we can also add some more details on those uh, smooth looking uh, rocks we can add a little bit of bump map to that some mud bank or riverbed looks really good <clears throat> so that adds a bit more detail and distraction to make it look more realistic. Uh, maybe add a little bit more wide angle to this. There you go. All right, so I'm going to render that with anti-aliasing at final render. And of course you can always adjust these parameters to do even better. Now it's time to bring our tree in here, maybe another tree. <clears throat> so uh, again, you can, well, first of all, keep a snapshot of that, store that. 
And then we can go to the render and render geometry on top of this background, right? So the same tree we already had loaded, we are going to use the same tree or we're going to lose it, right? We can rotate this if it's not too slow, if it's not too big a model. Uh, it can use the bounding box. Uh, usually the wireframe works quite nice, uh, nicely for some of the models we have included. But if you load your own OBJ, and we'll get to that in the next tutorial, if you load your own OBJ, then that's a different story. You may need to switch to the preview in the bounding box, or at least uh, in this wireframe mode. Let's draw one more here. There's a, a tree, the first tree. That one looks nice, a little scaggy. Is that the right word? I don't know. <laughs> I may want to have a little bit more lighting. Um, Let's make it a little bit brighter here and bring it up closer. So for that, I need to switch up here to the uh, to the move mode, not up and down, but with the left button, bring it closer. Then you can see, in fact, I'm going to keep the shaded mode. So as I'm rotating the light, I can see the light source hitting it a little bit better. And that's really important if you want to actually uh, you know, coordinate where the light source is coming from. If you move the tree to the left here, you know that's a perfect place to actually see the lighting on the right side, even a little bit more. Let's let's go see how much more we can have it. There you go. Uh, maybe ambient light, we can add a little bit. Let's say the environment is a little bit kind of a bluish tint, but also a little bit yellowish. Uh, let's get a little bit kind of something like this here, the light greenish gray. So that, ooh, that's too much actually. Let's go a little bit less, maybe a little bit darker. There you go. And so that's it. You can simply keep that as is, or you could load it into a brush and paint it in a couple of other places. We'll see another tutorial to uh, explore this further. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.